You want to learn how to make one, three, five, or even 10K a month as a freelance writer? Let me tell you, there is so many opportunities to get paid to write online, even if you have no experience at all. Hey everyone, my name is Michael Leonard and I'm the creator of Inspire Your Success. You see, I had to make freelance writing work because in 2017, I decided to quit my nine to five. It was a good paying six figure job, but I was tired of it. I was tired of the constraints of having to be tied down. I was tired of working on somebody else's dream and I was tired of not living a life that was true to myself. So I quit. Now at the time I had a blog and I had made about $200 online. Luckily I'd saved a ton of money, but I knew that if I wasn't making money that I was going to be burning through my savings account. And eventually it got to the point after five or six months where I wasn't really making much money with my blog and other side hustles that I really took on freelance writing. So in 2018, I basically went from zero all the way up to $10,000 a month as a freelance writer. Now you might be thinking, oh, I'm not a writer or I don't have any formal experience. Let me tell you, if you can write words on a Google doc, you can get paid to do this. And the thing is, it doesn't have to take 20 or 30 or 40 hours a week even. I mean, if you're just trying to make that first thousand dollars, you can get a few gigs and do that. If you're trying to turn this into a full-time job where you're making five, seven, 10, or even more each month, you can absolutely do that. But it really just comes down to setting up a system and figuring out what you need to do so that way you can rinse and repeat it. So I'm gonna show you the seven steps that took me from zero to 5K and recently took me all the way up to 10K a month simply from freelance writing content online. Now you might be wondering, what is freelance writing? Pretty much every website out there loves content. In fact, it needs content. One of the oldest sayings in marketing is content is king. And honestly, it's so true because we're in this information rich era. We have Facebook, social media, Twitter, I mean everything. We're just bombarded with all these messages all the time. And if you look at any of the companies or businesses that are really taking advantage of social media and really internet marketing, it's often that they're creating great content to that way continually getting more readers, getting people to their site, buying their products, becoming subscribers, or whatever else they're trying to do. So pretty much every business out there has a blog that you can write for or produces articles or content, or it could even be email marketing or so many different eras that I will talk about in a different video, but just know that so many businesses need people writing for them. And it's not a job where you have to go in and clock in somewhere and sit at a dull office place with shitty coworkers and lame lighting. You don't have to worry about that. You can sit on your couch, you can go to a coffee shop, or you can be halfway around the world. As long as you get your written content in on time and edit it and keep your clients happy, you can do it wherever. And that's one of the biggest benefits of freelance writing is you can do it whenever, wherever, and honestly, the earning potential is basically up to you. So I'm gonna tell you the seven steps that I took to get that first 5K. Now, if you like this video, make sure you like it down below. And if you have any questions, always let me know in the comments. So the first step is having the right mindset. Now you might be thinking you're looking for a tactical advice, ready to dive right in, but anytime you're taking on a new endeavor, especially when it comes to creating content online or really any new sport you're trying to do or skill you're trying to learn, you have to have the right mindset. If you go in there thinking, this probably isn't gonna work, I'm not very good, I don't have any experience, all the limiting beliefs that are holding you back from doing so much else will hold you back from being successful as a freelance writer. So you need to have the right mindset. You need to have the attitude of, why not me? And honestly, it's the case. I had zero experience when I got started. In fact, I was a terrible writer. I even had a subscriber one time write into me, who was also a friend, kind of, say, I can't believe how you don't spell check anything. Like, why are you doing this? It was bad. I'm not trying to say I was a natural writer, I was gifted or anything like that. So I want you to dispel that myth that you have to be a great writer initially to start because you don't. It's something that you just have to put in the hours, invest in yourself, invest in your skills, and constantly look for feedback to get better and you can do it. 
Now, I'm not saying you need to not <laughs> submit articles that are haven't been formatted properly or spell checked, but you need to go into it with the right mindset, thinking, why not me? Now, step number two, you need to pick some sort of niche. At the beginning, you can become what's known as a generalist. And a generalist is someone that can write about a variety of topics. Now, that could be something like I write about golf, and then I write about uh, personal development, and then I write about digital marketing, and then I write about vets or pets or whatever niche that you want to choose. But that is only going to last you for so long, and it's going to limit your income potential. So that's how I got started, and that's how I recommend you get started unless you have something that you're very, very passionate about and that you're knowledgeable about that you can actually provide a ton of value for clients. So when it comes to picking a niche, and there's a ton of different things that you can do. You can either go after something you love writing about and something you're familiar with, or you can go after ones that you think are just going to be very profitable. It really just depends on what your goals are as a freelance writer. And I'm going to talk about more about that here on step six, but... I really want you to figure out, okay, what am I good at now? What is something that people say, man, I wish I was good at working out or getting up early or sending uh, persuasive emails or you know, writing about specific products or, or just thinking really, really like what do people already come to you and say, man, you're really good at that or I wish I could do this or could you teach me this? If you're already knowledgeable about something, which all of you are, you just have to find it, think about what you're passionate about. A quick example for me, I get paid thousands of dollars every month to write about golf. I'm a huge golfer, I've been at it for 21 years, but I never in my wildest dreams thought I'd be able to pay my mortgage by writing about golf. So it's one of those things that you really need to think about, hey, what, what am I passionate about already? What do people say I'm good at? Or what is profitable? And then in the middle, you're gonna kind of find that synergy of really your niche. And it's not something that has to be the same forever. I started out in the personal finance section and after a while I got super tired of writing about 401ks and IRAs and just other things that aren't that exciting to me. But I had a strong background in it and it wasn't even a formal one. So I just want you to remember that you don't have to be an expert at it. You don't have to have tons of experience, but if you know enough about something or you're interested about a topic, then you can absolutely get started. Step number three is all about creating your winning portfolio. Now you need to have some samples of your writing so that way you can send them off to potential clients when you're reaching out for cold pitches or you're doing job boards or whatever you're trying to do for the outreach. So it's really important to spend some time and craft some samples of your best work. Now you can do this in a few different ways. The first way is to simply find a niche that you want to write in and then start writing about it. You can research some relevant articles or some uh, similar topics that you might see online, but you really just want to do a little bit of research for figuring out what people are writing about already and then start creating some samples. So one of the things I like to do, for uh, example, would just be like, say you want to write about personal development. Go on success.com, see some of their popular articles and figure out how you can make one of your own and get some ideas and basically go into Google Drive, create a doc on your computer, wherever you want to go and just start writing. Get something on paper and eventually you'll start crafting some papers that you can then turn into clients for your initial pitches because again they're not going to hire you unless you have a huge social media presence or you have some sort of uh, other background that you might be able to know or there may be a mutual connection. For the most part you're going to be reaching out to absolute strangers at the beginning so you need to have some sort of background that you can say, hey, here's my uh, pieces, let me know what you think. So you really want to start by creating that portfolio. But then you might be thinking, well, what do I do with all these? Do I just keep them? Do I send a Google Doc? Do I send a Microsoft Word Doc? Honestly, it doesn't really look that professional if you're really taking this seriously. And again, it doesn't have to be a full-time job, but if you want to be known as someone that's really like, hey, this is my brand, this is what I do, then you need to think about step number four. And that's all about creating a personal website. If you have a blog, you can also use this. Although I would stress the importance of getting your own name. For example, mine is michaelleonard.net and it's specific to my own writing and coaching services. It's completely separate from my blog because my blog isn't always gonna be exactly what my writing content's about. It wouldn't make sense for me to put my golf writing samples onto my blog, which is more about building online businesses and creating successful habits. So 
that's something that you want to maybe uh, specify. So if you don't have a blog, no worries. If you do, you can use that, but I would really, really recommend that you get started with your own website because you can control your image. So that way when someone types in your name on Google, the first thing they're gonna do, once it builds up a little value, of course, is to see your professional website that you develop or have developed, and it honestly isn't that much work. So I'm gonna link down to some resources below so that way you can click on some of those and learn a little bit. But honestly, don't be intimidated by creating a website. There's so many different tutorials and YouTube videos and guides, or you can always hire someone for like a hundred bucks to get started. And so that's really the fourth step. Now, if you guys are liking this, make sure to like it down below. I'm also going to link to a lot of these resources as well as a, a free ebook. So that way you can have that next step. So make sure you're liking everything down below and let me know if this is more content that you want created. Now, once you have that personal site created, you're going on to step number five, which is the scary part of getting started as a freelance writer. And what does that mean? Well, it's actually going out there and putting yourself out in the world and actually applying for gigs. Now, I have scoured the internet. At the beginning, I did not know what the hell I was doing. I was going on this site, sending this email. I had zero strategy. I didn't really know what I was doing. So. This is a big thing I want to help speed up your success by clicking on the link down below. I have a big post that I wrote. It's all about 50 plus places to find your first job online. So you need to start applying for gigs, but you might be thinking like, well, what do I do? And that's exactly where I was. And that's where a lot of people are going to get hung up. But if you have the, the right mindset, you picked your niche, you have some pieces and you have your personal site created, now you got to go out there and get it. So this is where that hustle mentality needs to come in. And I really, really recommend that you try and really crush it out at the beginning. Build some momentum, get that confidence going because what you'll find is that it's a snowball and you're getting a groove, you'll get in your rhythm, you'll start to find your tone, you'll start to figure out how to pitch clients and reach out to strangers and you'll start to get over that fear because inaction leads to fear. And I sat behind my computer right there, scared as hell at the beginning because I was scared of rejection. Now I wanna get that out of the way right now. Rejection is gonna happen in freelance writing. It's gonna happen in life. It is an absolute necessity. It always is gonna happen. You can't avoid it. But I love what one of my mentors, Jack Canfield, always said. He said, rejection doesn't exist. You never had it in the first place. So think about it that way when you're scared of going after a, a website that you want to write for or a client that you think would be a great fit. Don't worry about not or getting rejected and not getting the job. No way. Think about it like, hey, I don't have it right now. What's the harm of me asking? So you need to get over that fear and then just start going, start pitching. And I talk a lot about uh, more about this in my course, uh, but I'll also talk about it more in some of those links down below, especially with the actual sites to go to, because you can do job boards, you can cold pitch clients, you can do so many different things like Upwork and freelance jobs and pro blogger, and there's all kinds of resources available. And I'll create a separate video for that to go over some of the best places that I got started. But again, you have to just start getting after it. Step number six is creating some income goals because if you're doing all this right and you follow steps one through five, I can almost guarantee if you have the right grammar, setup, structure, things like that, that you will get a job. Now, it might not be a high paying job at the beginning. It might be something small. Like for example, my first freelance writing gig was a golf writing job that I found on Upwork and I ended up getting paid, I think it was like 65 bucks for like 2,000 words, which is a not a very, very low rate, which I'm not recommending you do, but everyone has to start somewhere. So for me, I was thrilled. I could not believe somebody was paying me to write words online. So you have to start setting some goals though once you do get started, once you get that momentum created, because one of the worst things that can happen to you is get getting complacent. Now this happened to me once I hit that four, five, six K a month, I found myself being really okay because I was paying my bills. I wasn't like stressed anymore. I kind of lost my hustle mentality. And I really don't want you to do that because freelance writing is one of those things where clients can leave, there's seasonality, maybe they lost a budget. Like there's a lot of different factors. So 
I'll talk more about diversifying your clients in a different video, but I really, really want to recommend that you set income goals and don't settle because I went like four to five months once I hit that four to five K where I just stayed there. And even though I didn't love all those clients I was working with, I just knew the income was reliable. I knew I could write about it and it honestly held me back from making more money and it kind of made me be lazy. So I don't want you to fall into that. I really want you to set income goals each month, each week, even each day if you want. Now setting goals is a whole nother story that we'll talk about in a different video, but I really, really can't recommend enough setting goals and then creating a plan to get those goals. So for example, say your goal is to make $5,000 a month as a freelance writer. Well, let's say that you make you know, 20 cents a word or 10 cents a word or figure out whatever rate you're charging in the beginning or it could be per hour, which I don't recommend, or it could be a retainer, but reverse engineer the goal. So if it's $5,000 and you say average $1,000 a month for clients, that means you need to get five clients and you only have two right now. So you need to think to yourself, what are the actions I can take right now to fill in that income void and go from 2,000 a month to 5,000? What steps do I need to take? How proactive do I need to be? What kind of uh, habits do I need to have? Do I need to be pitching clients or reaching out or going to networking events? Like, Think about it in that sense because that is gonna be huge. Once you have a goal, your mind is gonna work to make it happen, but unless you write it down and affirm it and think about that goal on a regular basis and think about why you're trying to get that goal. Is it to pay off student loan debt? Is it to buy your uh, spouse a, a nice gift? Is it to pay off your mortgage? Like Whatever it is, have that goal and the reason right in front of your laptop or computer so you're constantly thinking about it. And I promise your mind will help you try and find ways to do that. And now step number seven, if you made it this far, you're making money, you have a portfolio, you're doing all the right stuff, you're making money, whether it's on your couch or halfway around the world when you're traveling, like congrats on that. Now it's really coming down to tracking that income and figuring out how you can raise your rates because you're gonna start at a lower rate than where you're gonna end up. For example, I think when I started, I was at like five or six cents a word. Now I'm at like 20, 25, 30, 35 cents a word just because I build rapport, I have a larger uh, portfolio, I've been featured in big sites all over the internet, and I'm starting to build my brand. So you have to track your income and then figure out how can I make more money? What other services can I provide? Is it social media? Is it writing emails? Is it doing copywriting for landing pages? Whatever it is, you wanna figure that out so that way you can track the income and then find more ways to increase it. And again, keep those goals going so that way you're hustling, you don't get complacent, and you don't start losing clients or getting lazy. Now, the bonus step here is to invest in yourself. I have found so much value in spending money on me. Now people to me always spend money on other people, they spend time with other people, but you need to focus on yourself if you're trying to be a great writer, great entrepreneur, or really just a great person in my opinion. The personal development and the, the money that you spend on yourself will build trust, it'll build credibility, it'll build rapport with yourself. Now some of the ways that I invest in myself as a writer and as an entrepreneur are things like just reading on a constant basis. I have that whole bookshelf over there. I haven't read all of them, but I bought all these books so that way I have no shortage of content to consume to make me smarter, make me more qualified, make me be able to charge more as I, as I learn more. Again, that whole saying, you earn, the more you learn, the more you earn. And it's so true. So reading, that's a cheap, easy one. You could watch YouTube videos or you could go big time and start actually buying courses. I mean, courses are not much anymore. I spent probably $1,000 on different courses just for freelance writing when I got started, and they easily paid themselves off as I started getting more clients, charging more, learning new strategies and other things. So courses are another great one. You could do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'll link to some of the products and programs that I have as well, or you could just start going to networking events or masterminds or simply talking to people out and about getting your brand out there, sharing it on social media, like just start investing in yourself in little ways and I promise that it will really build the credibility with yourself and you'll start to realize that, hey, I can learn some new skills, I can charge more, I can make more, and if you want, maybe you can leave that job that you've been talking about 
and it's really killing your self-esteem, you just hate being there all day, or you're tired of being away from your family. So that's really what I want from you. So again, those are the seven steps to making your first $5,000 or more each month on a recurring basis as a freelance writer. Now, if you like this content, I have linked to a lot of similar posts that I've written and other resources to help you take that next step. So there's a free ebook down below if you wanna make sure to subscribe to that. You can get that straight to your inbox and learn a lot more skills in this video. And then I'll also send some of the other resources, like I mentioned, the, uh, the main things for finding your first job, how to create your first portfolio, how to price your uh, services, different things like that. So make sure you click down below. If you like this video, please go ahead and like it. So that way it gives me uh, notice that this is the kind of content you guys want and I'm happy to create more of it. And if you wanna see more of this content and other great entrepreneurship and self-improvement topics, make sure to subscribe so that way you'll never miss a video. Thank you so much and I hope you start making money online as a freelance writer.